In this video lecture, we're going to look at another application of descriptive statistics called standardizing data, also known as z-score. So what is standardizing data? It's a process of putting different variables on same scale. The process allows you to compare values from different samples, such as exams and uh, from different classes. What does standardization do? Standardizing data, it's a, it produces the number of standard deviations above or below the mean for any data element. Also, it identifies the usual or unusual data element in the process. What is z-score? It's a numerical value for any data element once the process of standardization is completed. It basically tells us how many standard devi deviations the data element is below or above the mean. Well, how do we find the z-score? It's a very easy formula. The z-score is x minus x bar divided by s. If the result of this calculation is more than three decimals, it's uh, highly recommended to round it to three decimal places. Now what is x in this formula? X represents the data element that we wish to standardize. What is X bar in the z-score formula? X bar represents the mean of the sample. And finally, what is S in the z-score formula? And S is the standard deviation of the sample. So let's look at this example. The class exam had an average of 78 with a standard deviation of 6.8. We want to find the z-score for exam result 90. And we want to find the data element associated with the z-score 2.5. So these questions are basically the reverse of each other. First, we need to find the z-score for the exam with score 90. And then the second part is find the data element that has a z-score of 2.5. So let's get started. To find a z-score, we use the formula. In place of x, we plug in 90 x bar is 78 and s, the standard deviation, is given to be 6.8. We do the calculation and we round the answer to three decimal places as it was recommended. Now, to find the data element with the z-score 2.5 is the same process. This time, z is 2.5 and x is unknown, the data element, the exam score is unknown. We use 78 for x bar and 6.8 for s, cross multiply, solve the linear equation, and x is 95. Now let's take a look at unusual and ordinary values. 
any data element that has a z-score that falls within negative 2 and 2 is considered ordinary or usual value. Now here's a chart that will help us identify ordinary and unusual values. So if the z-score is between negative 2 and 2, it's considered usual or ordinary. If the z-score is greater than 2 or is less than negative 2, then it's called unusual value. Now notice that the ordinary values are consistent with the usual range, also known as 95% range, as was discussed in empirical rules. John makes a monthly salary of $5,750 as a nurse at a local hospital. The average salary for 25 randomly selected nurses was $5,275 with a standard deviation of $225. We want to find 95% range of salaries according to the empirical rule. We want to find the z-score for John's salary. And we also want to identify if John's salary was usual or unusual. So let's get us started. To find the usual range by empirical rule, we use the formula of x bar plus or minus 2s. So once you plug in the numbers and you calculate, you get the usual range to be from 4,825 to 5,725. Now the z-score for John's salary will be x is 5,750 the mean is 5,275 and the standard deviation was 225. So we do the calculation, rounding it to three decimals, the z-score will be 2.111. Now, is this considered usual or unusual? Well, the z-score is more than two, therefore, John's salary is considered unusual and unusually high. Maria made 91 on exam 1 and 87 on exam 2 in her stat class. Below is a summary of exam results for both exams. So exam 1 had a mean of 85 with a standard deviation of 4.8. And exam 2 had a mean of 76.8 with a standard deviation of 6.8. Was any of her exam results unusual? And what exam did she do better relative to the rest of this course? So first, we're going to find the z-score and compare that with the chart that I showed you earlier to see if it's usual or unusual. Z-score for exam 1, her score was 91 with the average of 85, a standard deviation of 4.8, and that comes to 1.25. And for exam two, we do similar calculation with different numbers, and the z-score is 1.5. Both of these z-scores fall within negative two and two. Therefore, they're considered to be usual. So neither one of these results were unusual. 
Since the z-score on exam 2 is greater than the z-score for exam 1, then we can say that she performed better in exam 2 compared to everyone else in taking exam 1 and exam 2. The score was lower, but her performance was actually better relative to all the other scores. The SAT scores of randomly selected 100 exams had a mean of 1,375 and a standard deviation of 40. Mike's SAT result had a Z-score of 2.125. How was his SAT score, usual or unusual? And what was his SAT score? Well, Mike's Z score is already greater than 2. Therefore, his performance is considered to be unusual. Now, since it's more than 2, it's unusually high. But if it was less than negative 2, it would have been unusually low. Now, what was his SAT score? We plug in the numbers. The Z score is 2.125. His score was unknown, so X. We use the given mean and given a standard deviation. Solve the equation by cross multiplying and you know solve for X. And X is 1,460, which is his SAT score. I hope this presentation helped you understand uh, the process of standardizing data elements, finding z-scores, and discussing usual and unusual data elements.